Hi, this is Frank Carmody. Today we're going to create a presentation file and a video. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the very first thing I did was to create a new presentation file or a standard IPN, so that's in the new file menu. Um, I can then go ahead and click create view and now I need to go and select an assembly file. Any assembly file will do for this assignment. Um, click OK and the assembly opens here. Notice that I have selected a couple of features previously. I can go to the view tab and select no shadow, grounded shadow, or I can select x-ray shadow, which I did. Uh, on the shading I can select hidden edge or I can select wireframe. Uh, let's go ahead and do hidden edge. Now in my presentation, whoops, in my presentation uh, tab, uh, the, main, the main tool here is tweak components. Okay, precision view rotation just is the same thing as the cube, but um, it's a little bit more precise. And then the animation feature. So let's go ahead with tweak components. What you're doing with tweak components is you're pulling apart the, the assembly. So you're pulling apart the assembly in the opposite order you want it to go back together. So the last piece to go in in the video is the first piece you pull out as you're doing tweak components. Okay, so let's take a look here. We're going to pull this pin out first. You'll notice that there is a small red Z. Do you notice that there's a three, three arrows that come out when you, when you highlight a component? The Z is the arrow that shows you what direction you're going to be moving the component in. So if I click here, notice that I can move it along the Z axis. Oops. And I have to do cancel because it stopped me there. Um, so we're going to do tweak components again. Click and drag drag it out to the final position you want it in, and then click close. I've noticed it works better if you just close the dialog every time. Okay, so let's go ahead. We want the z-axis again. Notice the z-axis change, changes based upon where I'm at. Okay. Okay, so notice I, I selected to see where the z-axis was going to go. And notice I do that by selecting one line or another. Okay, so you do that by selecting faces or lines and adjusting your mouse to see where the z-axis is going to allow you to move the object. So let's go ahead and click close. Tweak components again. This time I'm going to rotate uh, the U that I just took off. Okay, so I'm going to go grab, and this, when you're doing a rotate, notice I switched it from a straight line to rotate. You're selecting the axis of rotation here. So go ahead and click on whatever line you use is going to be the center of your axis of rotation, and then you just pull your mouse out to make the, the piece rotate, and click close. Next, we're going to pull out this screw. Notice the z-axis is pointing straight out. I click and pull and close and finally do tweak components. I'm going to click this ball and move it down. Okay, and I'm finished. Okay, <clears throat> so what I've done here is that, as you can see I've pulled out the uh, I've pulled all the components apart and now my animation is going to uh, put them back together. Okay, so let me go ahead to now during the animation what you want to do is you want to set up your drawing just how you want to see it in your animation. So that means getting this, all the parts into the frame and, uh, and making and turning the cube exactly how you want it to be rotated uh, in the animation. So let's go ahead and click animate. The animate dialog looks simple but it's actually quite complicated and a little bit odd. So especially the process you have to do, it's not very straightforward. So first of all, let's take the interval. The interval allows you to slow down or speed up the animation. So let's play it at 100 interval. You can think of this as milliseconds between frames. So you notice how slow that is going. So I reset it. Let's change it to 10 and click apply. And now we're going to play it again and notice how fast it's going. So depending on what you're wanting to do with this video, uh, you have to choose the, the interval. So I'm going to set mine at 15. I'm going to click apply. I'm going to test it one time. Okay, I'm happy with the speed. Now we're going to go ahead and record our video. So to record the video, it's a bit of a process. The process is this. I'm going to click record. Then I'm going to have to set some file, file parameters. Name the file, select the type of video. Once I do that, I'll get back to this dialog again. At that point, I have to click play. That's when it's actually recording the video. And then to write the video file, I have to click record one last time. So watch very carefully. So I click record the first time. 
Now I've already made this video in the past, so I'm going to click the same video name. You would have to name the video. I choose WMV because I'm going to post it directly online. Uh, if you wanted to do other things with the video, you'd want to choose AVI. AVI is a little bit more flexible. So I choose WMV. I click Save. Yes, I want to replace it. Okay, now this now this dialog comes up uh, where you have to select uh, the type of video that you want. And essentially what you're selecting is the quality of the video. The higher the KPBS, the higher the quality and the larger the file size. I'm going to select 384 KPBS. Okay, I click OK. Now I'm back to the animate uh, the animate dialog. Okay, now to start recording, I have to click the play button. So at this point, I click the play button. Okay, my dialog is recording. Notice my animate window collapses down to the bottom of the screen. Once it's finished playing, the dialog pops back up. The animation dialog pops back up. However, if I was to check my file size right now, it would be 0K. Okay, if I was to look at my file size of my video, it would be 0K right now. So what I have to do is I have to actually click the record video one last time to make Inventor write the, write the video file to my computer. So notice once I click that video, my, my, um, my video is written to the Windows file system. And I'm not sure if you can see this on the video, but once you, I go ahead and double click the video, and let's take a look at the quality of the video here. So notice that not the highest quality video, um, but it looks okay. Uh, and by using the different video uh, options that you have inside Inventor, uh, you can do a lot of different things with it. So you notice that our that our video wasn't that great quality. So what I've noticed is that if you go to the View tab, the the hidden the hidden edges inside the, the shapes don't really come across in the video very well and the shadows don't come across in the video very well either. Uh, if we go back to presentation and click animate again, we can actually, um, let's go ahead and click record. Again, we'll make a second video here uh, just to show, uh, we're still going to do WMV, we're going to click save, we do want to replace it. And let's take a look at the custom option. So if you go all the way to the bottom of the type of video, we can click custom profile. If you click custom profile, you can set a high KPBS, and you can do a custom size. In this case, I'm going to do 640 by 480. I click OK. Click play to record. OK, so my animation plays again. The animation is going to come back up in just a second. OK, I, I, at the very end, I click record to write the video file to the file system. OK, now my video is in the file system. Let's go ahead and double click it <clears throat> and take a look at our results. Okay, it's coming back up. Okay, so it's just maybe a little bit better. Um, a bigger, definitely, we can kind of see it a little bit better. Um, you should play around with the with the settings on Inventor to the highest quality video you can. Okay, good luck. Uh, go ahead and uh, and uh, create a presentation and the associated video file. Upload it, and uh, that's it. Great job.